Welcome back to the course of Natural Resources Management. So, today we will continue from the last class where we were discussing about the fundamentals of participatory rural appraisal and rapid rural appraisal. Today we will look into the various principles of carrying out participatory rural appraisal and there are five key principles for carrying out this PRA exercise at the ground level. The first one is participation, then flexibility, good teamwork and as I mentioned in the previous class about optimal ignorance which is also quite important, systematic follow-ups or systematic carrying out various exercise. I will discuss each one of these five principles in detail. So, first to start with participation. So, PRA exercise relies heavily on the participation of communities. In the previous class, we discussed about the importance of the involvement or ownership of the participants, means the communities, the farmers, the people that with whom actually will carry out the PR exercise. So, the design itself has to be like that, that it should enable the local people to get involved in every decision making step. Okay? Flexibility, second principle, the combination of all the techniques we will be discussing today and in the last class also we have discussed couple of them. The combination of all techniques and strategies are specific depending upon the different variables such as size or you know mix of the PRA team, the time, the resources available and location etc etc. So, your flexibility will be the key for the success of PR exercise. Teamwork needless to say that without a good teamwork you cannot carry out such an exercise which involve you know human being in the central theme of this PR exercise. So, PRA as it says that is a best conducted by local team with local language respecting the local culture with few outsiders like us if you go as a trainer or as a person who will actually the coordinating that entire exercise. Significant representation of women and topic specific experts are critical for a successful PR exercise. Okay? Then fourth principle is optimal ignorance. In the previous class I discussed about the importance of ignorance. So, to be you know efficient in terms of time or your resources, money, PRA work needs to gather just enough information which are relevant, which, which are sufficient for your decision making. So, little bit of ignorance is ok, because unnecessarily to collect too much of information probably will lead you nowhere, but you will end up spending your time, energy and money. Systematic, yes, we have to be systematic. Data collection should be done in a very, very systematic manner. It is recording, then the places that you are going to visit, it is geographic locations, relative you know information to those coordinates has to be very systematic manner. All right. Now, let us see the steps that we need to follow for carrying out this important exercise. So, first the choice and the sequencing of the methods that we are going to follow. What we need to do? We need to have a range of PRA methods that are available which we discussed in the previous module. If you recall that uh, to express the farmers uh, real situation in all its complexity, they may combine different dimension while interacting with you. It could be spatial, nominal, temporal, ordinal, numerical and you know different types of thing. So, your choice of methods and sequencing is going to be very critical for a successful PR exercise. PRA methods can be used in conjunction, can be used in conjunction with the traditional research method. So, that has to be in such a way that each complements each other. Method should be developed and evolved to meet specific circumstances. All right. So, that you can you know you have to have some pre-project assessment which we discussed in module A in the, in the previous uh, classes. So, mistakes in, in any method selection should not be seen as a failure. Rather, we should learn from that mistake 
and that actually give us a chance to be you know much better for the next exercise that we will be going to carry out. No blueprint as such exist you know for the order in which the PRA has to be carried out. So, do not be too much uh, what you call dependent on certain protocol for carrying out PRA. It has to be relatively open ended in that sense. Next step farmer, which farmers? Now, for a successful PRA to take place you need to be little bit smart also in choosing your respondent. Farmers perception, their reality, their priority, opportunities, their struggle it could be you know vary from one to the other. So, it is important for us to know that which farmer we need to get involved with that is a very very uh, critical exercise. Now, the difference is that affect the people's livelihood in the community that you are interacting with are the one that should be examined. Methods you can use like you know such as wealth, well-being, ranking which can identify their categories in the sense of economic status. We will be discussing this thing in great detail in the following classes about various method of ranking. Now, male female ratio should be balanced to get a clear perspective. So, this is again a point that we discussed in module 5 a. So, means it has to be inclusive in nature. Some exercise are best conducted in groups, some may not be. So, groups are useful in exploring the general issues that they are facing day to day and those are useful for you know to initiate some new research. Now, PRA which are conducted at the individual or at the household level those may be you know appropriate for exploring specific problem or specific solution. So, these uh, actually we need to keep in, in mind. Now, next uh, step is triangulation of data. In 5a, we discussed about triangulation, how important it is for PRA. So, information gathered should not be accepted on face value. So, suppose uh, in your you know group exercise, you know that one farmer you know personally and uh, so you should not be biased to his information. And just because suppose you know that farmer is, is relatively you know better educated than rest of us, you should not just accept on the face value the information that he is providing. So, prior experiences with researchers, prevailing developmental rhetoric, government policy, all those things influence local people perception that we need to keep in mind while carrying out the peer exercise. Okay? There may be some biases from our end, from the researchers end also, because you know we also go with some expectation, we also go with some predetermined thought process. So, these also uh, need to be under control. Hence, triangulation or cross checking of data is a very, very important component or steps in carrying out a successful PRA. All right. The next step is behavior or attitude attitudes or behavior. You know few tips I would like to you know share with you while carrying out PR exercise at the field level. We should always have you know a contact with your team members and also with your audience or the participants. We should not hurry up any steps especially developing the rapport of friendship or relation with the community. It has to be a slow process because if you you know do it in a very hurried manner there will be a sense of you know what you call insecurity or doubts in the mind of the people that why why actually these people are coming to our you know area and you know trying to do everything very fast so relax do not push do not rush hand over sometime the control to the people that you are talking with so that you know they also feel that they are in involved but with a very, very watchful eye. The key output is the discussion not the technical methods that we always keep in mind and that is why I said just couple of minutes back that we need not to be very much dependent on protocol. Okay. So, next sometime it is better to be a quiet listener in such kind of exercise. So, do not convert the local classification and terminologies into scientific jargons 
not only that that your participants or community will not appreciate that but they will not also understand at times okay so they may lose the track that what you are actually discussing there the information generated in this exercise remember it belongs to the farmers that are involved in this exercise we must give them due acknowledgement and keep them in the loop we should not try to hijack their knowledge and that's what is one of the most sensitive thing that i would like to you know convey to you that we must not try to hijack because otherwise what will happen there will be a lack of trust between you and your participant that is the community mm -hmm.